Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.3 of Townsend's A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, for this problem, it asks us to, um, well, so it states in problem 3.2, we haven't done yet, we will see that the state of a spin one half particle that is spin up along the axis whose direction is specified by the unit vector, um, I'll just say it I guess, and is equal to sine, sine theta cosine phi i hat plus sine theta sine phi j hat plus cosine theta k hat. With theta and phi defined as follows, so theta is the angle between the z-axis and our vector, our, our position vector, and phi is the uh, angle between the x and y, uh, or angle from the x-axis uh, with, um, you know, X coming out of board, Y going along this way, Z going up. So it gives us the state plus N. Um, so this is like a, general, a generalized state for the, the state of the spin one and a half particle aligned in the up direction. Um, well, it's more of a generalized state. So uh, it's generalized because theta and phi here are two parameters. So it's, para it's a parameterized state. And so you know, for choices of phi and theta, you'll get different states. So there's three parts to this question. Part A says verify the state plus n reduces to the states plus x and plus y, given in this chapter for the appropriate choices of angles theta and phi. So real quick. So we have our state plus n here. Now, if you, you guys can look in your books, um, you can find the states plus x and plus y. So plus x is 1 over root 2 times plus z plus 1 over root 2 times minus z. Um, and the state plus y is 1 over root 2 times plus z plus i over root 2 times minus z state. When I, when I say plus z and minus z, I mean the ket vectors. So really all you have to really do is look at those states, which you can see I've, I have them here in the answers, and then look at this state and you, there's really no other way but just kind of thinking about it. And so if you use theta equal to pi over two, then these arguments here for cosine and sine become uh, pi over four when you plug in that for theta. And if you remember, cosine and sine of pi over four is one over root two. So that's gonna be the correct choice for that um, to get plus x. Now for phi, we have this e to the i phi term. So in our state plus x, we don't have any imaginary component. So we need to get rid of this exponential. So phi equal to zero, we have e to the e to the zero essentially. And anything to the zero's power is one. So that gets rid of that exponential term. So for those choices of phi and uh, theta, we get cosine of pi over four plus z plus sine of pi over four minus z, you know, Actually evaluating that, you get one over root two, factored out, you get plus z plus minus z, and that is equal to the state plus x. Now, if we keep theta equal to pi over two, but change phi to equal pi over two, then e to the i pi over two is actually equal to i. So this exponential term here um, doesn't go away, and we get an i here, and those two terms still evaluate to uh, one over root two, so when I factor it out, we get one over root two times plus z plus i over root two times minus z, which is a state plus y. So that one, that part's pretty easy. You just kind of have to think about it for a second. Um, so for part b, uh, suppose that the measurement of the spin along the z-axis is carried out on a particle in this state plus n. What is the probability that the measurement yields h bar over two and minus h bar over two. So if we're gonna be performing the measurement here, um, to do that mathematically, we take the inner product of the state that we're in with the state that we wanna measure, and then we take the magnitude squared of that inner product. And that will give us the probability that we get the state in, in this bra vector here. So we take the bra cat of plus z in here, so I just wrote plus z and then wrapped plus n in parentheses. When you multiply that through, you get cosine over two 
uh, inner product of plus e plus e plus e to the i phi sine of uh, theta over two, the inner product of plus e minus e. So the plus e and the minus e is our basis states, and they are a complete set and are orthogonal to each other. So plus z and minus z are, ortho or are orthogonal to each other. When you take an inner product of two orthogonal vectors, you get zero. So they're like 90 degrees apart. It's like doing the dot product, essentially. Uh, the inner product is just a um, more generalized version of the dot product. So this term is zero, and that goes away, and you're just left with cosine of theta over two because the inner product of plus z with itself is one. So then we just, to get the probability that we measure plus z, meaning that we measure h bar over two, you just take the magnitude squared. So the probability is cosine squared of theta over two. And very similar logic here, if you want to figure out what the probability of measuring minus h bar over two was, probability that we're in the state minus z. So we take that inner product with our state plus n. Very similar logic. Just imagine replacing this plus z with minus z. What we would get is that the cosine of theta two term would be zero and the sine of theta over two term would be one here. And so we just get the one or we get the e to the i phi times sine of theta over two. But when you take the magnitude squared of a imaginary exponent like, or exponential like that, it goes away. And we, we'd just be left with sine of theta over two. So when you take the magnitude squared, we get sine squared of theta over two for the probability of measuring minus z or measuring minus h bar over two. And then finally, uh, for part C, let me just read this. Determine the uncertainty delta S sub Z of your measurements. All right, so the uncertainty uh, delta S of Z is essentially given in both as an equation um, in chapter one. So it's the square root of the expectation value of the spin, uh, the, the Z component of the spin squared minus the expectation value of the Z component of the spin whole squared. So this is the expectation value of the squared uh, values of the spin minus the expectation value of the, like just squaring the actual expectation value. So that's a distinct difference there. So first, let's just find what the expectation value of the spin component S of Z here is. So to find the expectation value, what you do is you sum up all of the probabilities multiplied by their, the value um, that the probability represents. So for example, one of our options is h bar over two. That's one value that we can get, that we can get from our measurements. So we multiply that value by its, the probability of measuring that value, which is cosine squared of theta over two. So we do that h bar over two, h bar over two times cosine square root of theta over two. And then we sum up with uh, the other term, but this minus, this pl the plus here would become minus because this is minus h bar over two, the other option we have, and that's multiplied by sine square root of theta over two. So just reducing that, we just factor out the, the factor of h bar over two, and you get cosine squared minus sine squared. So, Real quick, we can simplify this term um, using some trig identities uh, to make this a little easier. So just taking a side real quick, we're gonna come over here. So the, the term in parentheses, cosine squared minus sine squared, um, if you look up some trig identities, I believe it's the half angle formula, um, you can represent cosine squared of theta over two as one plus cosine of theta over two, and then the sine squared can read one minus cosine of theta over two. So if you plug, if you write it like this, and then you do the math and get one half plus one half cosine theta minus one half plus cosine theta over two. Um, so the one halves go away and you get one half cosine theta plus one half cosine theta gives you a whole cosine of theta. And so we can simply rewrite this whole term here as cosine of theta. So our expectation value for the spin component along the z direction is just cosine of theta times h bar over two. So that's a simpler way to write that. So you wanna remember that. All right, so we have this. Let us find the expectation value 
um, the squared, the, the expectation value of the spin component squared. So what we do in this case is we take each value that we can measure and square it and multiply it by the probability of getting that value. So instead of h bar over two, we have to square h bar over two. So that's gonna be h bar squared over four. We don't square the probability, just the actual value that we can measure. And so that's multiplied by cosine squared of theta over two plus sine squared of theta over two times times a minus h bar over two whole squared. That will make that positive. So when you do the math here, we can factor out a factor of h bar squared over four. We get cosine squared of theta over two plus sine squared of theta over two. So cosine cosine squared of x times plus sine squared of x is just one. So this just reduces to one, and we just get h bar squared over four, which I just realized I left a, uh, a squared off there. All right, so that's our first term here, h bar squared over four. We then come over back over here. We found the expectation value here, but now we just need to square it. So taking that and squaring it, this gives us cosine squared of theta times h bar squared over four. So then to find the uncertainty, we just plug those values in. So we'll get the square root of h bar over two squared. I, I rewrote h bar squared over four as h bar over two squared, just to make it a bit more suggestive. So we get h bar over two squared minus cosine squared times h bar over two squared, all in the square root. We can then factor out this h bar over two squared, and then that will be able to be pulled out of the square root as just h bar over two. And what's left in when you factor is just one minus cosine squared of theta. Well, one minus cosine squared of theta is just sine squared of theta. So, because cosine squared plus sine squared is one, so just do the outer over there. So one minus cosine squared is sine squared. Sine squared, the square root of sine squared is sine of theta. So what we get is just h bar over two times sine of theta. And so that is our uncertainty. So that's pretty much it. Pretty simple problem. There's a bunch of uh, simple algebra, really. Nothing too fancy. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any corrections, also let me know. And I will see you guys on problem 1.4.